All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Structure Free Office Hours. <laughs> so I have a projectile that has eight meters per second of velocity, and it's at leaving at an angle of 40 degrees. And if I draw a schematic, all right here, I wanna draw a schematic. So one, my little schematic, I've got here, uh, let's see, it's something on the ground. We'll make that the ground like this. And my projectile, I'll use orange like this from the ground here and it has an initial velocity at 40 degrees VA equal to 8 meters per second and that initial angle is 40 degrees and I would like to find let's see the projectile is moving in this path here this and the ground is here and I would like to find the path of the projectile y as a function of x and the origin here is we'll say uh we'll say the the particle here is on is like right here and this is the x coordinate the x coordinate here and the y here and this is currently its initial position is at zero zero and so we'd like to find the path this this parabola really as a function of x and then change to normal and tangential components and find the normal and tangential components of acceleration when the time is 0.25 seconds so first we do the rectilinear problem using x y components so we do the projectile motion problem so here i'll just call this projectile motion two projectile motion and really any projectile motion problem can be broken down into really two equations and two unknowns is the idea and what we have in the if I look here if I look at the X motion X motion let's see the acceleration in the X is zero and so I would have the velocity in the X is just V the initial velocity VA cosine of 40 degrees that horizontal component of that VA and then I would take an integral and I would find that XF equals X naught or X at a plus VA cosine of 40 degrees times T right here any question that's pretty good yeah that's good that's good all right <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I guess, yeah, sorry. <laughs> right, so here, this would be, the initial position is zero, zero. So that means XA is zero. And, and really, this, you know, we don't have to call this XF. We could just call it X. And this equation for position would just be X is equal to VA cosine of 40 degrees times T. All right, and now we go to the Y motion the Y motion and in the Y direction, uh, the acceleration in the Y is, A Y is negative G, assuming Y is pointing upwards, acceleration is pointing down. And so here V Y is equal to V A sine of 45 degrees, oops, not 45, 40. Uh, minus GT yes yeah that's that initial velocity in the Y minus GT and then the position the Y F is Y a plus V a sine of 40 degrees times T minus one half GT squared right there and again I know previously that this Y a is zero I know gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared and great and so again I don't have to write yf this could just be y equals va sine of 40 degrees times t minus one half gt squared and really because I want y as a function of x I would rearrange this equation here this would be t equals x 
over VA cosine of 40 degrees. And I'm just going to substitute this into for every time part right here. And so when I substitute that, I get Y is VA sine of 40 times T, which is X over VA cosine of 40 degrees minus 1 half G times T squared, which would be X over VA cosine of 40 degrees squared. And that would be Y as a function of X. Okay, and um, this is see all the VAs cancel out, so we can simplify some stuff here. Let's see, VA cancels out here. Um, and so I would get Y with some algebra would be tangent of 40 times X minus uh, this G is 9.81. So this would be 4.905 meters per second squared. Uh, let's see, over. VA, which was 40 meters per second, or no, 8 meters eight. per second squared times cosine of 40 degrees squared times x squared. And let's see, let's do a little bit more math. And let me see, a little more calculation. Tangent of 40, make sure my calculator is in degree mode. So this is like 0.83. 9x minus, uh, let's see. Oh, here, let me, let me pause this for now. All right, so I got, this is now my y, so I've answered that question. This is y as a function of x. Yay, okay, good. So we've answered that first one. This is y as a function of x. Hopefully it's right. Um, <laughs> Who knows, right? This would be, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. The units here, just to make sure, is over meter. Yes, because I have this meter per second squared, and then this is meter squared per second squared, and then cosine 40 squared, which is nothing. So it's like, so this, I, my final, this is 0 0.1306 divided by meter, and then when I plug in an X value, it'll come out to units of meter for Y. All right, great. So now I go back and now I at t equals 0.25 seconds, I want to know where the heck is my particle. So here, let's see here. Uh, let's see, at t equals 0.25 seconds. So let's find t3 uh, position at t equals 0.25 seconds. And so my x position would be mm, my x at 0.25 seconds, I'm just going to plug into my position equation here would be plus 8 meters per second cosine of 40 degrees times 0.25 seconds, which is, okay, which is the thing. Here we go. Let's see, 8 times cosine of 40. 0.25, I got 1.53 meters. Shoot, if I make a mistake, don't judge me. It's because it's live. <laughs> judge yourself. Ah, just kidding. Okay, and then my Y position, I could actually just plug it back into here. I could plug it back into this path equation, or I can go and plug it in way over here. It's all good either way. Um, so here, I'll use this function right here. So Y at 0.25 seconds is equal to 0.839 times 1.53 meters minus 0 0.1306 over meter times 1.53 meters squared. Put a little multiply sign there. And this is, hmm, 0.839 1.53 minus 0 0.1306 times 1.53 squared. What is that? 0 0.97795. All right. Meters. So about one. Oh, man. I don't know where that is. That could be. 
shoot. <laughs> My guess is that it is. Let's see. Oh man. Let's see. Let's just let's see. When will this thing change direction? Uh, when is this equal to velocity equal to zero? Let's see. Eight times sine of forty uh, divided by divided by nine point eight one. 0.52. Oh, so it changes direction. So the peak is at t equals 0.52. So it's right around here. The particle is right around here. Okay, it's right around there. And um, and so now, if I if I look at that location right here, I look at the path. Uh, I, I'm looking at. I want to find the normal tangential components of the acceleration. And so here, I would say this direction is my plus, I'm using a totally separate chord. This would be my plus t direction. And then towards the center of curvature will be my plus n. Yes, like this. And this, you know, my velocity here, this is the velocity of the particle at 0.25 seconds, like that, yeah. And, um, hmm, great. Oh, wow, this could be interesting. Okay, and so I need to find the normal and tangential components of acceleration. Wow, okay. And if I, if the total acceleration vector, the only thing acting on this particle is, what's the only acceleration acting on this particle? It is, well, so let's see, what's the acceleration that this particle is experiencing? If I throw something, don't think about coordinate systems. If I just throw something, what's the only acceleration acting on it? Gravity. Gravity, that's right. Like wicked, defying gravity. <laughs> All right, so here, boom, this is my total acceleration vector and it has a magnitude of G and it's pointing straight down, okay? so. Um, What's kind of interesting here is that, um, you know, this, I could break this acceleration vector into the 10, this is, this would be the normal component and this would be the tangential component of the acceleration. Okay. All right. And in fact, if we had the angle, we can find a N and a T directly. Oh, interesting. Many ways to solve this problem. Many ways. Exciting. Exciting. Okay. So, so here, since I have the, um, the path, right? One way for me to solve this is by finding the angle right here. So I'll even like, I'll put, I'll use an orange line right here. Ah, no, not orange. Let's see, do I have another fun color? No, let's go with green right here. If I draw a horizontal line right here, if I can find this angle, which I'll call phi, then that would be equal to this angle right here, phi. Whoa, and I'll put double lines, that would be phi. So, I, wow, how can I find that angle phi, right? And just from, based on pure geometry, so here, one, two, three, four, here, we'll put it over here, four, uh, slope, if I find the slope at t, equals 0.25 seconds, yes. Then I would have the angle, right? So at dy dx, if I take the time derivative dy dx, this by definition is a slope, would be 0.839 minus uh, two times 0 0.1306, which is point two six one two x and at t equals 0.25 seconds we know x is 1.53 meters so the slope at x equals 1.53 meters is 0.839 minus 0.2612 notice this is still units of 1 over m times 1.53 and the meters and meters would cancel out, and this would be, what would this be? Let's see, point, point 0.839 minus point 0.2612 times 1.53 is, hopefully it's a positive number, yes, point 0.4. This is point 0.439, all 
right, or 0.44, yeah? And, and by geometry, that means at this point right here, my rise over run, this is a positive result, so I would have, this would be 0.439 versus one. And my angle right here, which would be the same as phi, and tangent of phi is, uh, oops, I just have to do the inverse tangent. So phi is the inverse tangent of 0.439 over 1, which is, oh, you want to double check me? Sure. Yeah, why not? It's like, oh, I got 23.7 degrees. I wonder if that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So 23.7 degrees. Hey, right here. So if I know this is 23.7 degrees, then this is also 23.7 degrees. And now, oh man, wow. Now I know that I can like four, five, five acceleration, one, determine the acceleration components. Acceleration components. Uh, let's see here, that vector triangle is here is A, here is A, and then here was, here was A N, and this was A T. Did I do that right? Let's see. Yes, 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 yes. And this angle right here is the angle phi, and so A N, the magnitude of AN and the direction actually, AN is um, A cosine of phi, which would be 9.81 meters per second squared cosine of 23.7 degrees. What is that? What is that? Let's see. Eight point nine eight. Yeah. Eight point nine eight meters per second squared, and then a t is equal to a sine of phi, which is again nine point eight one meters per second squared sine of twenty three point seven degrees, and this is. You got a number for me. Three point nine four. Three. 0.94 meters per second squared is a T. And, and it just asked me for the components. I don't need like magnitude or direction. Yes, maybe, who knows? Okay, all right, and this is a N and yes. Boom. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it, those are the components. Yes, and okay, so that's one way to solve it. Another way to solve this problem would have been to calculate the magnitude or the speed of the particle here at 0.25 seconds. So you would get Vx and Vy, and then the square root of some squares, right? And then you could have gotten the normal component by doing uh, dv dt. I'm sorry, no, 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 sorry. V squared over rho, V squared over rho. And then for at, huh, for at, if you wanted to go that way, oh. You would need the dv dt, so you need to get the velocity as a function of time. Wow, oh, so you'd have to come back here and you'd have velocity as a function of time. You'd have vx, oh, you'd have to combine these two, vx and vy, and do the square root of some squares, and that would give you the speed as a function of time of vx and vy. Ooh, try it that way, and you should get the same results. But you get, you know, you're gonna do square root of some squares of vx and vy, That'll give you the speed as a function of time. You take a time derivative, and that'll give you the acceleration in the tangential direction. Okay. Wow. All right, all right, that's interesting. All right, hopefully that was a fun problem. I enjoyed it, and uh, talk to you later. See ya. Structure free.